4.30 in the morning. Uh, Ricky and I are embarking on a nine and a half hour drive to Helen, Georgia. miles in this 1985 Grumman Cub van over the last year since I finished its turbo diesel engine conversion and it has been such a blast. I've loved every single second of it. But with that said, there is a growing list of things that I have to work on if I want to keep driving this like I have been. If you've been around for a while, you probably already know the story of the Grumman Cub van, but if you haven't, let me catch you up to speed. See, this was a purpose-built mail delivery truck for USPS, or so I thought. That theory has been shaken up recently in my head by somebody on Facebook who said, actually, that's not true. This was originally intended for a different government agency and they didn't want it. So after they denied it, it was offered to USPS and they didn't want it either. So at that point, it was offered to the general public for sale as the Grumman Cub Van. And uh, yeah, they only made 500 because, well, nobody really wanted it. So given this thing's intended use, the Cub Van was kind of a flop. It really didn't work out well for Grumman in any direction. However, Grumman did secure the USPS contract later with the LLV, which was a completely different truck based on the Chevrolet S10. This, however, was based on a Volkswagen Rabbit pickup, a Mark I Volkswagen Rabbit. When I bought this van, it needed absolutely everything to be drivable again. Basically, what I bought was a titled shell of a cub van that really hadn't been on the road in 20 years. So I tore the entire thing apart, suspension, axles, bearings, anything that moved, bent, twisted, carrying fluid had to be replaced. And I did all of that on top of swapping in a new engine. This originally had a 1.6 Volkswagen diesel engine with no turbo and a three-speed automatic transmission. And I threw all of that in the trash. I swapped in a 1.9 TDI and a five-speed manual transmission, and it has been the best. I couldn't imagine a better swap. This brings us to problem number one. It is very harsh in this thing. Now, I've been thinking about this harshest problem for a while, and I think I've got a solution in mind. So this thing is using the original Mark I style engine mount bushings with brackets to adapt those to the TDI. So, if I can get rid of the torque mounts and replace those and update those for Mark IV parts, it should, in theory, make this thing a good bit softer to drive around. Now, really, the worst of the vibration is at idle, so around town is probably the most jarring. When you're on the road and cruising around at 50 or 60 miles an hour, it's really not that bad, but I think it could be better all the way around if I retrofit a Mark IV dog bone torque mount to this chassis. So that's the first thing that I want to fix. Now, the second thing I want to fix is the exhaust, because unfortunately, the way I ran it when I initially did the swap uh, didn't work out so well. After 10,000 miles, it's been hammered on by the rear axle. So I'm going to have to cut off part and route it up and above the axle a little bit better than I did previously. So. Nothing terrible, nothing crazy. Obviously, it's still drivable like it sits, but let's get back to the shop and get these issues underway. Okay, so here, is the mount that I was mentioning earlier. This is the stock rabbit torque mount, um, usually found on a 1.6 diesel or a 1.7, 1.8 gas. Pretty much every single Mark I had this style of like a rubber block for a rear trans mount. But for the TDI, it vibrates pretty harshly. So between that 
and this front snub mount and the lower rad support, it, it just doesn't dampen the vibration very well. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of this for this. And this is a stock Mark IV torque mount, like a dog bone mount. So this actually bolts up here and here in the bottom of the transmission. So I have to make a bracket to adapt this bolt pattern. And I've already started with this plate here. Um, and then I'll have to pull this bracket off and build from there. So that is the plan. Hopefully that eats up some of the vibration that this TDI makes. actually pretty happy with how that came out. There's room for everything. It fits pretty nicely. It's it's the only thing I don't like about it now is how low it sits. It's like a shade lower than the oil pan. Um, but it's really not that bad. So the only thing left to do is remove this front torque mount, one of the original rabbit mounts, and then uh, we should be good to go put this thing back on the ground, fire it up, and see what it's like now with the new motor mount. Okay, here we go. The moment we've all been waiting for. Super stoked. I'm just really hoping this fixes that super stiff, you know, harsh feeling that this thing had before. It sucked to drive, it sucked to live with, and I'm hoping that this makes that better. So, without further ado, here we go. It doesn't look a whole lot different, but the mount down there, of course, is gone. Let's fire it up. I'm so curious. Hoo ah. Whoa! You can barely feel it! No way! It's not like. Whoa! It's, listen, there's a little bit of vibration. Nothing like it was. Wow. That's amazing. You can see, well, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but the motor does move more. So that means it's more isolated from the chassis itself which gives it that nice, smoother feeling um, that I was going for. So this is really perfect. Yes! Wow. That is absolutely unreal. See, now that it's this quiet and like isolated, I'm gonna start noticing other problems with the chassis, um, other, other issues that it has. But so far, this is, wow. <laughs> well, I think we can officially scratch that off the list. This thing is completely different. So my next item of business is the exhaust. 
the axle is just smashing its way through that pipe. And uh, I guess I just don't have it routed correctly. So what I'm gonna do is cut it off back there, route it up higher through here, the space between this brace and the bottom of the floor. So bring it up through here, maybe bend these brake lines a bit out of the way. Exhaust through here, then down, and then out. But for now, I might just unbend that and kind of massage it a little bit just so I can keep driving it. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did because honestly, the season here in Ohio is coming to a close very quickly. Next week is December. And honestly, I just want to enjoy this before it's time to put it away. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.